Hello, my dear students. So, today this this is the second class of biology, and the topic which we are going to learn today that is kingdom Animalia. On our previous term, we have learned about the classification of the plant. Now, today we are going to learn about the classification of animals. Animals. There are million of animals present around us. Some are very small, and some are very big. Animals which are present around us, some can fly, some crawl on the land, some walk on the land, some swim in the river or in the water. So there are different kind of the animals which we see around us. What uh, you can example, you can uh, name the animals, right? The mosquito, the house fly, the uh, fishes, the birds, the human beings, we all are the animal. The crawling animals like the snake, like the earthworm, the animals who swim in the river like fishes, the animals which fly like birds and bats. So these all are the animals which you see around us. And these animals have a common feature that is they are visible by the naked eyes which means they are multicellular in nature they are made up of, of more than one cell all the animals are multicellular and eukaryotic in nature eukaryotic means their nucleus is advanced and it is enclosed inside the nuclear membrane in class 6 we have read in the chapter cell that Plant cell has a cell wall, while animal cell do not have a cell wall. And animals are made by the animal cell. So it means their cell even don't have a cell wall in it. So these animals are multicellular, eukaryotic and their cells do not contain a cell wall. All the animals are non-photosynthetic or non autotrophic in nature because they do not contain chlorophyll so they are not able to prepare their own food and they depend on other living organism for their food you must have seen the dog capturing its prey you must have seen a cow eating the grass you, and especially we we human beings depend on other plants and animals for our food you must have seen a bird uh, eating the grains you must have seen the cockroaches feeding on to the dead organic matter so these all are the animals and we can't prepare our food so that is why we are heterotrophic what do the heterotrophic nutrition means heterotrophic nutrition means the nutrition in which living organism depend on other living organism or dead organic matter for its food and can't prepare its own food in the presence of sun light so we animals are heterotrophic in nature after this a special character of the animal is they but their body parts show movement and they show the locomotion. Animals show movement and locomotion. I am saying movement and locomotion. What do the movement and locomotion mean? Movement. Movement is the movement of the body parts at one particular place. See, if I am sitting, I am sitting, my lips are moving, I am speaking. This is the movement. I am sitting, I am moving my hand. This is the movement. Because my body is fixed. It is not changing the position. And But my body parts are just moving. This is called as the movement. Why? Locomotion. In the locomotion, body changes its location. If I walk from one place to another, that will be called as the locomotion. Because my position is changing. After this, Another special character of the animals is that their body show the limited growth. Unlike plants, the animal's body show limited growth. Plant body grow unlimited till the time they die. But in animals, this does not happen. Animal body grow up to a certain limit. You must see yourself. You people are kids. You are still growing day by day your hands are growing your brain is growing your body parts are growing but see your parents they are still from so long their body parts are not growing the brain is not growing they are just still from so long they appear the same so that is the growth that is lim limited in 
animals but the, the growth is unlimited in plants so these are the some characters of the animals one of the special character in the animal is the presence of backbone or vertebral column some of the animal are present in the world who don't have the vertebral column while some animals have the vertebral column present in them so on the basis of the presence or the absence of vertebral column the animals have been divided into two group parts the two groups of the animals are vertebrates and invertebrates vertebrates are those animals who have the backbone present in their body while invertebrates are those animals who do not have the backbone present in their body how can we differentiate between vertebrates and invertebrates how we will come to know that this animal is vertebrate and this animal is invertebrate you must have seen a cockroach you must have seen a butterfly you must have seen a mosquito and why to go apart you must have seen a spider a starfish an octopus these all are invertebrates while vertebrates are fishes frogs lizard snake tortoise human beings we all are vertebrates how we can differentiate between them we can differentiate on the presence of the absence of the backbone vertebrates are going to have a spinal cord on the backbone present at the back while invertebrates don't have what are the other features by which we can recognize that are presence of the limbs in invertebrates limbs are generally absent in all the invertebrates limbs are generally absent if they are present they are found in more than 3 pairs 3 to 4 pairs of the limbs are present in invertebrates you must have seen a butterfly butterfly has 3 pairs of the legs present in it you must have seen octopus so many limbs right there are four pair of the limbs present in octopus so in invertebrates limbs are generally absent or if present they are three or more than three pairs of the limbs are present while in vertebrate only specifically only two pairs of the limbs are there all the vertebrates are going to have only two pairs of the limb you must have seen a bird bird has wings one pair of wing one pair of legs total two pairs you must have seen a cow four legs means two pairs of the limbs we human beings we have two hands and two legs but it means two pairs of the limbs you must have seen a fish fish has in total four fins means total two pairs of the limbs you must have seen a a crocodile crocodile also has four legs four which means two pairs of the limbs so specifically all the vertebrates are going to have two pairs or four legs present in their body two pairs of the limbs are found in vertebrates while in invertebrates three or more than three pair of the limbs are present in invertebrates tail is absent if present it is just a appearance of the body part means false tail is present in vertebrates don't have a tail why vertebrates are going to have a tail present in them you must be thinking about us human beings we don't have a tail no we also have but the last vertebrae of which forms the tail that is fused that is mixed up with the vertebral column that is why our tail don't appears out because we don't need it that is why it has distinguished but uh, it has vanished but other vertebrates like cow monkey crocodile lizard they all have the tail present in their body as they need it so all the vertebrates are going to have the tail while invertebrates don't have the tail so this is the basis of the difference that we can do between vertebrate and invertebrate now vertebrate and invertebrate there are many millions of them and so invertebrates were divided into eight phylums while vertebrates are divided into eight classes so now come on to the word different invertebrates 
invertebrates which are found or present around us they are millions of them and we can we know them as the group of the phylums there are eight phylums in the invertebrates the first phylum is phylum porifera second is phylum cylindrata third is phylum platyhelminthes next phylum nematyhelminthes next phylum annelida the next one is phylum arthropoda the next phylum mollusca and the last one is phylum echinodermata there are total eight phylums of the invertebrates the first phylum porifera next phylum cylindrata next phylum platyhelminthes next nematyhelminthes next annelida next arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata these all phylums have been given their name on the shape or the structure of their body now vertebrates vertebrates have been divided in two classes there are total five classes of the vertebrates the first class of the vertebrate is physis second physis which include fishes next amphibia which include frog next reptilia they are the crocodiles next apes which are the birds mammals which include the animal with their mammary gland all these classes have been given name on the basis of their special characters so now we are coming on to the first phylum given in your book of invertebrate that is phylum porifera phylum porifera has been given the name on the special character that is they are the pore bearing animals their body is completely formed of pores that is why they are also called as sponges you must have seen a sponge right sponge has so many pores in it we can squeeze it we can it can absorb the water and when we squeeze it the water moves out and becomes lighter so like that only like the sponge only their body appears and that is why they are also called as sponges they have many pores present in their body poriferans have too many pores in their body but the poriferans have a large pore present at the top in the poriferan there is a large opening which is present at the top this large opening is called as the osculum which act as an anus there are many pores smaller pores present all over their body which are called as ostia ostia act as the mouth as these poriferans are aquatic they are found in rivers they are found in sea so their body is present inside the water so with the help of the water these poriferans take the food and oxygen through the ostia water waves move water waves move inside their body move inside their body and with the water food and oxygen move inside these smaller opening called as ostia when the food and oxygen move inside the body it is absorbed by the cell of their body and the waste material is excreted out through this larger opening called as osculum with the water after this these poriferans are fixed at one particular place they don't show locomotion why because they are present inside the water they don't need and they have many pores present in their body so they don't need to locomote as the food and oxygen move inside their body with the water along with the water current so that is why they don't need to locomote and they are fixed at one particular place many of the poriferans are grown in the colonies you can see the images of these poriferans you can see they are present in the group these are the colonial animals these poriferans grow in the colonies many or mostly the poriferans are found in the marine water in the sea and in the ocean some are present in fresh water and the example of the porifera which is present in the fresh water that is spongilla spongilla is a fresh water porifera while 
ਸਾਈਕਨ ਲਿਊਕੋਸੋਲਨੀਆ ਯੂਸ ਪੰਜਿਆ ਤੇ ਆ ਮਰੀਨ ਇਨ ਨੇਚਰ ਯੂਸ ਪੰਜਿਆ ਇਜ਼ ਆਲਸੋ ਕਾਲਡ ਐਸ ਬਾਥ ਸਪੰਜ ਬਾਥ ਸਪੰਜ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂਸਡ ਕਮਰਸ਼ਲੀ ਫॉर ਦ ਬੇਥਿੰਗ ਪਰਪਸ ਐਸ ਦ ਸਕ੍ਰਬ ਨਾਓ ਦ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਫਾਈਲਮ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਫਾਈਲਮ ਸੀਲੈਂਟਰੇਟਰ ਫਾਈਲਮ ਸੀਲੈਂਟਰੇਟਰ ਦੇ ਆਲਸੋ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਗਿਵਨ देयर ਨੇਮ on the basis of the special character that is there have hollow sac like body the nidaria means hollow sac like body that is why they are given the name cilentrata or nidaria and they have been given this name nidaria on the basis of the special character that i will tell you for afterwards all the cilentrates are aquatic and they are mostly marine in nature the animals which are the part of the sealing reef they that is jellyfish and hydra jellyfish you must have seen jellyfish is free floating it swims in the river but the second member of this uh, phylum that is a uh, hydra hydra is not free floating hydra is fixed at one particular place hydra moves but it shows the locomotion but only when it is required all the animals belonging to the phylum cilentrata are shown over here in this image this is hydra this is sea animal this is jellyfish they have a common feature that they have these thread like structure appearing in their body these thread like structure over here are called as tentacles these thread like structures are called as tentacles which help them in locomotion which help them in capturing the prey the nidarians have a special body character that is their body is hollow and they have a large opening one single this is single opening present at the top this single opening act as both mouth and anus and they have the thread like structure that is called as the tentacles these tentacles are present in their body which help them in capturing the prey these tentacles help them in capturing prey and also help in anchoring these tentacles also help in locomotion so the function of the tentacle is it helps in capturing prey it helps in anchoring the body it also helps in locomotion these tentacles have a special feature on which these cilentrates got the name that is nidaria in these tentacle there is a needle like structure which is called as which is called as needoblast as they have the needoblast present this needoblast help in capturing the prey as when this uh, animal captures a prey this needoblast pierce get pierced into the body of that uh, animal and that animal die so that is why this because of the presence of this needoblast these animals got the name nidaria this is a jellyfish which has one single opening and the tentacles which help in prey which help in anchoring the body and which help in locomotion like the jellyfish there are 
another other animals also like hydra like sea animal they also have a special character that is they have bilaterally they have radially symmetrical body what do the radially symmetrical body means radially symmetrical body means the body can be divided into two equal half through any plane but on a single point like a circle their body is like a circle which can be divided into two equal half from any side if we cut a circle like this it can be divided into two equal half if we cut a circle like this through this point it can be divided into two equal half and if we cut a circle through the center point like this it can be divided into two equal half so a circle can be divided into two equal half through any plane from one single point and this is radially symmetrical body and all the cnidarians have radially symmetrical body after this we are coming on to the next phylum that is phylum platyhelminthes Plat phylum platyhelminthes are the platy the platy word means flat and helminthes means worms so all the flat worms are the part of phylum platyhelminthes platyhelminthes the platy word means flat and the helminthes words means worms platyhelminthes include the worms which are very flat the examples are liver fluke the tapeworm they are flat worms which are the parasites of the animals and these are the parasite what are the parasites parasites are those living organisms who feed on to the other living organism those living organism who live inside the body of other living organism for their food and for their nourishment that is they are the parasites so these platyhelminthes live inside the body of animal for their food they feed on the blood of the animals that is why they are called as the parasites these flat worms have the flat body they have thin and flat body their body is without the cavity means they don't have any opening present inside their body their body is solid they just have a single mouth which is which helps them in sucking the blood of the host animal after this their body is divided into many segments you can see in the tapeworm many linings are visible this is the segmentation these are the segments these are the segments which are visible in the tapeworm but these segments appear only at the top it, i mean to say they appear just from the outside they are not present internally these segmentation is not the internal segmentation it is just the appearance on the outer side of the body that is the segmentation is false in nature so in the platyhelminthes the body is divided into many segments but the segmentation is false it means it is just up uh, just appeared on the outer side and is not present on the inner side the example of the flat worms are liver fluke planaria blood fluke and the tapeworm they are the parasites of the animals animals like the beef that is buffalo like goat and also sometime of the humans you must have seen the worms in our uh, stomach and sometime uh, of the, and you must have seen the small kids that worms move out of their body from where they come these are these parasites only which enter into the body with the food which we eat after this the next phylum which we come on to that is phylum nematihelminthes or nematoda the nemati word means round and again helminthes word mean worms 
so the worms which are round they are the we are called as the nematelmintes or round worms you can see the image over here these are cylindrical completely cylindrical they are not flat they are cylindrical in nature so that is why they are called as round worms their body do not show any lining their body is completely smooth no lines nothing is there so their body is unsegmented they and you can also see their body appears like a thread so they have a thread like body they are also the parasite of the living organism and they are the parasite of living organism like human beings they also can survive into our stomach into our intestine and into our alimentary canal so they are the parasites of the human beings even sometime the worms uh, we go to the doctor and doctor says that uh, you have worms in your uh, stomach so from where the oh, these worms come these worms come from with the food which we eat and these are these worms only which enter into our body and survive there and feed on our blood as the nourishment which they get that is the blood our blood now the next phylum which we move on to that is phylum annelida phylum annelida are the true segmented worms true or they are also called as true worms because the segmentation which is present in their body that is true in nature it is internally also and externally also you can see this this is the earthworm which is a member of this particular phylum and you can see this this is the leech which is a member of this particular phylum the earthworm and the leech they are show bilaterally symmetrical body what do the bilaterally symmetrical body means bilaterally symmetrical body means if the body is divided into two equal halves from one single plane then only it will be divided into two equal halves otherwise it will not be able to divide into two equal half from any other plane that is bilaterally symmetrical body like for example see if we cut our body from the center so our body will be divided into two equal halves from the center only like if we divide our body suppose this is our body this is our body right if we divide our body from in like a in, in a single line from head to toe like this then only we, our body will be divided into two equal halves one ear this side one ear this side one eye this side one eye this side nose will be divided half here half here our lips will be divided into two halves after this the neck two halves one hand this side one hand this side and all the internal organs will be divided into two equal halves so this is bilaterally symmetrical but and suppose if we divide our body this like this is from the center from our waist our body will not be divided into two equal halves this is wrong so this is not this is a bilaterally symmetrical body means if a body is divided into two equal halves through one single plane only through if we cut in one single line in one single plane then only the body will be divided into two equal half if we the divide the body from any other plane the body will not be divided into two equal halves this is called as bilaterally symmetrical body and this bilaterally symmetrical body is found in the annelids see their body if we divide their body if we divide their body 
like this then only their body will be divided into two equal halves if we do divide the body like this it will not be divided so this is called as the bilaterally symmetrical body these annelids have a cavity inside their body they have a well developed elementary canal elementary canal means the digestive system they have a developed digestive system in their body for the digestion of their food they are the only animals in which the excretory organs were visible for the first time excretory organs were shown in them for the first time they are the only animals who have the excretory organ for the for, in which the excretory organ was visible for the first time and the excretory organ is called as nephridia nephridia is a special organ of the excretion present in their body after this they also have a special structure for the movement that is called as parapodia or setae which help them to crawl onto the ground or to move forward so the examples of the annelids are earthworm and the leech okay in this earthworm is called as the farmer's friend while leech is the parasite it is an ectoparasite of blood earthworm is a farmer's friend because earthworm has the habit of burrowing the soil earthworm burrows the soil as the earthworm burrows the soil it removes the soil from the surface and it makes the soil porous and if the soil becomes porous it ha incre increases the tendency of uh, uh, air holding and water holding capacity of the soil so and ho soil becomes more good in nature so like this farmer the, the earthworm is called as the farmer's friend while leech leech sucks the blood of the human beings on the animals feeds on the blood it's stuck onto the body from outside and starts sucking the blood that is why it is called as an ectoparasite of blood leech is a parasite while earthworm is farmer's friend and they both are the members of phylum annelida so students this was the topic for today which we have learnt i suppose every this topic will be clear to everyone if any query any problem can come to me with your queries on my portal thank you and you'll be getting the assignment regarding it